From the beginning, Lieutenant Colonel David Jackson knew he wanted to serve in the United States military. I enlisted to go in the Army in September of 89, and I shipped out in November of 89 to Fort McCollum, Alabama. David still had plans to pursue a college education, but in 1990, the Gulf War came into effect, marking the start of his career in the Army. Things looked pretty good. I started college, and, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm a little bit more prepared for this, but then Saddam Hussein had different ideas, right? And, and our unit was activated for roughly right under a year. As a military police officer, Mr. Jackson was stationed in Germany. During his time there, he witnessed something he says is unforgettable. When Chief Duran, the pilot from Black Hawk Down, was, was shot down, and he was held captive roughly, what, I think it was 13, 14 days. And one of the things I'll never forget, because we, we brought, they brought him to Ramstein Air Force Base, his femur was actually uh, sticking out uh, uh, as, as, you know, the biggest bone in your body. Uh, incredibly that he survived all this and especially his captives, you know, kept him around. But um, we brought him in, into Ramstein. He had his own wing, his own, entire wing in the, in, in the Longstuhl Regional Hospital there. While still in Germany, one of Lieutenant Colonel Jackson's most impactful deployments made its way into his life unexpectedly. So there were six of us and they briefed us that we were going to do uh, security for water purification and medical personnel. Um, our mission was to go to Goma, Zaire, Africa. Now, during this time period, uh, if you recall, uh, back in, I think it started roughly in April and May of 94, there was a massive genocide taking place in uh, Rwanda. The visuals from his time in Rwanda were some of the most gruesome he has ever seen. The region that we're going through is about 15 square miles, roughly. And there was estimates anywhere from about 800 to about 1,500 people a day were dying from collar, dysentery, and then just cross-border violence. By 1995, his path led him to Port-au-Prince. In Haiti, again, I got to see some of, the, some of the worst and some of the best of mankind. With his experiences in Haiti, he came away with a different outlook on life. It makes me just um, think about like how fragile life is and how uh, when things are uh, just collapsing all around you, how some people just lose hope. David finished up his commitment with the Army and took some time to himself, but he soon realized that he missed the structure of being in the military. I contacted the local National Guard recruiter, and I told him about my situation, but I said, look, education is my priority right now, but I, I, I kind of want to entertain going back in. And he said, oh, you know, let's work on something. He was soon sent to Fort Jackson, South Carolina for training. My drill weekends were consisted of showing up at the drill uh, unit on Friday, they, I would meet my, the team, whoever the team sergeant or team leader was. They would give me my, my equipment list. I'd go get my equipment, and then I'd spend the weekend jumping out of airplanes, helicopters, going to ranges, and hanging out with uh, the best of the best. With his new unit, Jackson was prepared to leave the country yet again. I was uh, commissioned as an officer, and our first assignment was in, well, prior to, we had to go to Fort Bliss, Texas, you know, for my officer basic course training and our first time was in Germany. So I was going back to Germany, and this time to a place called uh, Kitzigen, Germany. He soon saw himself traveling from Germany to Southeast Europe. I deployed to Kosovo in, I think it was January of 2001. His mission in Kosovo consisted of protecting the border alongside an armor battalion. And I go to Kosovo with, with two of my platoons, and we're doing border interdiction, and we're with a uh, armor uh, battalion there, 263 armor, with the 1st Infantry Division. And we're there for, uh, I think it was my entire battery. And while we're there, they identified two of our platoons and they picked my platoon to go to Iraq. Saddam Hussein's hometown was Jackson's destination on his next deployment. We were in Tikrit, Iraq, Saddam's hometown. So I made first lieutenant by then, I was the XO. Uh, um, I made pin on uh, captain while I was in Iraq. In between deployments, Lieutenant Colonel Jackson saw himself in several leadership roles and his next promotion. My next assignment was back at Fort Bliss, Texas. And there I served in a couple positions. I was uh, aide de camp to the commanding general. Uh, I served two commands, a training command and a regular uh, force com, forces command, and I made major. Uh, and from there I deployed to, uh, back to Iraq, this time to Taji, Iraq. 
To this day, the bond formed by members of the military is something he still finds extremely important. One of the things that I, that I miss and love about and you know, not with, with, the, with the, the brothers and, and the sisters that I served with in the military is that, is, is that we, don't, we serve for each other, right? We serve for a common purpose to take care of each other and, and help us get through situations. And, and that teamwork and that, that, that family is important. Although the military chapter of his life came to an end, he is ready to start another. What I'm gonna do at this, this next chapter of my life that I'm passionate about, that I'm giving back, that we're helping the community, we're helping people move forward. Um, I don't think that happens enough. Uh, I think there are many opportunities for people to help others move along. And I think as a society, if we put our, our, our politics aside and just treat people as treat people, and try to help each other out, I think we would, we would move so much further.